Let's talk about the apostrophe, and we'll focus especially on two major uses, contraction and possession. Before we get there, though, one thing you may have noticed is that in public places, the apostrophe is often misused. Apostrophes go missing uh, or are sometimes added in the wrong places. So in this men's washroom sign, for instance, you'll notice that there's an apostrophe missing. And some folks would say, well, this is a calamity, the end of the world is nigh. Uh, but it is somewhat comforting to know that the apostrophe is a fairly recent punctuation mark. If you go back, for instance, to the Middle Ages and you read the works of Geoffrey Chaucer, the 14th century poet, uh, when you read the Canterbury Tales, you come across the Knight's Tale, and Chaucer refers to this as the Knichtes Tala. So, Knichtes Tala. Here beginneth the Knichtes Tala. And you'll notice here that ES uh, stands in for apostrophe S. So the apostrophe is not entirely an ancient punctuation mark. Uh, and that's somewhat comforting to know, uh, at least for those people who tend to misuse it. But it shouldn't prevent us from using it properly, especially in academic contexts. One major use of the apostrophe is to show contraction. So contraction is where letters are missing and the apostrophe stands in the place of those letters uh, to show where they used to be. So in the first sentence here, rock and roll uh, is missing some letters. We would actually write out rock and roll if we wanted to be formal. And similarly, 80s should be 1980s. Now we use the apostrophe to, to reflect the fact that in normal conversation, we do tend to drop letters uh, as we try to speed things up. And you can see this especially with verbs. So in the second example, can't is short for cannot, and don't is short for uh, do not. In academic writing, you don't want to use apostrophes as much as you can, uh, because it seems a little bit colloquial or common. There are a few contractions you especially want to watch out for, and these are they are, or there, whose, which stands in for who is, and its, which means it is. The problem is that these contractions are very similar to three possessive personal pronouns, uh, and these are there, and whose, and its. So these pronouns show possession, and you can see the difference if you look at one example here, uh, there and there, in these two sentences. So they are coming for dinner. Uh, we've shortened this, so this should actually say they are. And their dinner is ready. In this case, we're showing possession. The dinner belongs to them. Uh, so if you can think of the possessive personal pronouns as showing that something belongs to something else, and if you can think of the other contractions as showing that there's a verb missing, uh, then it's easy to distinguish them. Let's spend a little bit more time with the contraction its. And if you look at these two sentences, you can see that one is with an apostrophe, which stands in for it is, and the other one is missing an apostrophe. So the simple test you can do then to see which one you need is to just read the sentence with it is in it and see if that makes sense. If you were to say the plane had lost it is propeller, you would kind of go, well, that's not right. Uh, and so in this case, it's without the apostrophe is correct because the propeller belongs to the plane. There's, there's possession in this case. Whereas in the second one, it's raining, it is raining, that does make sense. Uh, so just do that simple test and don't be embarrassed if you make this mistake because even very experienced English students in senior level university courses sometimes uh, make this error. We spent a lot of time talking about contractions, but there's one other major use of the apostrophe, and that is to show possession. So possession occurs when one thing grammatically belongs to another. In the first instance, we have the flight of the bird, and we can use this little word of to check if something is possessive. And in the second case, we have the colors of the clouds. So the colors belong to the clouds. Now, another thing to pay attention to is whether the noun is singular, as in bird, 
or plural as in clouds. So clouds is plural and birds is singular. And for singular nouns, we typically add an apostrophe and an S, whereas for plural uh, nouns, most of them end in S, so we just add an apostrophe, and that's it. There are some exceptions, of course. So for instance, children is a plural noun, uh, but it ends in apostrophe S because children does not end in an S. Uh, so watch out for those exceptions, but for the most part you can just see if it's singular, add apostrophe S, and if it's plural and ends in an S, just add the apostrophe. We'll provide a separate video with some further tricky cases and exceptions. Uh, what happens, for instance, if your singular noun ends in an S? Uh, so there are lots of difficult cases, but for now we've just tried to show that apostrophes are used for two primary purposes, contraction and possession.